Welcome to Round Robin. I'm your guest host, Don Mann, with the City of Hampton. And today we have as our guest, Alan Hoyleman with the Hampton History Museum. And he's going to talk about some exciting new exhibits that they have going on at the museum now. Do you want to go ahead and jump into that? Sure. We'll be opening an exhibit uh, called Civil War Journey, mm -hmm. uh, the maps and sketches of uh, uh, Robert Knox Sneeden. Uh, Sneeden was a, uh, a cartographer uh, assigned to the Union Army. And uh, all along his, his stops, uh, wherever he was assigned, he made uh, not only maps for the army, but he made uh, paintings, watercolor paintings, and drawings, and sketches, and really came up with a wonderful, he made over 450 of these, uh, documentary okay. evidence, visual documentary evidence of the goings on around him, and he was involved in the Peninsula Campaign, so a lot of, a lot of his work was, was kind of focused in the area we're in now. Wow. So is there anything particularly unique about the art that he made that's different from other images we might see from that era? Well, in that it was, it really was uh, spontaneous uh, rather than set pieces. So uh, wherever he was assigned, he would take, you know, uh, a matter of hours and, uh, and paint what was in front of him. Okay. And so uh, while others may have specialized in, in, in battlefield layouts, which is mm -hmm. a thing he did as a cartographer, right. A lot of his, his map making was, was the actual battle plans, you know, uh, kind of documenting the battle plan. But he would, for example, he would, he would make a painting of the building that was, uh, was uh, commandeered to be headquarters okay. uh, that he was assigned to, which made this wonderful documentation of architecture on the peninsula uh, in an era where photography was just becoming uh, widespread. And many of these uh, buildings that he documented with his watercolor paintings were never photographed. So they're right. unique in that way. Wow, okay. So it's a historical record that we it, might It is very much. He was, a, have, right? he was a diarist as well. So uh, uh, this exhibit comes from the uh, Virginia uh, Museum of Culture and, and History. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have his diary and watercolors are uh, 5,000 pages of diary entries and 450 paintings. Wow. So it was quite a, a complete documentation of his, uh, again from enlistment in New York City uh, right through uh, his parole from Andersonville prison in Georgia. And that's another one of the unique things about it is there are no images other than his of, the, of some of the uh, prisons that he was uh, in on his way from where he was captured in right. Virginia uh, to Andersonville. Okay. He did paintings that are unique to document these, the conditions in those prisons. Wow. So did they gather these documents, these images over time, or was it one collection that came? Uh, it, it, it mostly was one collection okay. discovered by the, the Virginia, it was then the Virginia Historical mm -hmm. Society. Uh, and uh, they have been the kind of the keepers and stewards of those. They've okay. done a couple of exhibits, including mm -hmm. this one that we've uh, borrowed, and a couple of books. Uh, on it, so uh, okay. it was interestingly almost completely intact. There are a few pieces that escaped his uh, collection that are in other collections around the okay. country, but it's almost entirely intact as wow. he as he drew it up, which wow. is very important. Yeah, as that's well. amazing to have a complete collection like that. Absolutely. So he's not exactly a household name, but is there anything uh, particular that he drew that? Uh, folks on the peninsula would be familiar with or uh, uh, they would be familiar with a lot of the works okay. we're going to show in the exhibit uh, he, he was an interesting figure for a couple of reasons his family were loyalists during the American Revolution oh, wow. okay. so they uh, were relocated to Nova Scotia mm -hmm. he moved back to New York City with his family when he was uh, 18 to study architecture and landscaping okay. so he kind of had the training underway when he enlisted mm -hmm. To, to do these kinds of drawings. Uh, right. Of course, he was enlisted as a, as a cartographer, uh, but he was involved, uh, his unit was immediately sent to uh, Hampton uh, to take part in the Peninsula okay. Campaign. So there are images that he drew of, of Fort Monroe, uh, of the burned city of Hampton. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, he did watercolors of the Siege of Yorktown. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a, a map of the Battle of Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. He did maps of the peninsula between Yorktown and Williamsburg. So he okay. was documenting this area quite fully. Right. And again, we're, we're hosting 43 of the 450 images he did. Right. But I think, again, the most 
fascinating. Seeing uh, our local landmarks mm -hmm. is, is wonderful, and seeing uh, buildings that are along the peninsula that we hear the history mm -hmm. of, these are the only surviving right, images exactly. for. Yeah. But the documentation he did of the prisons, mm -hmm. which you know, there were no photographs, so they are in almost entirely the documentation of the conditions in these prisons. Right. And he would hide these, he would do these mm -hmm. watercolor drawings and, and sketches, and he would hide them in his clothing. Oh, so okay. the, the, the people in, imprisoning him were unaware that he was saving okay. these, and they right. became part of this, this diary he was working on. So it was kind of a subterfuge for him to... Well, he was, certainly, he was certainly uh, paying attention to the world around right. him and, 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 and was showing the conditions in these prisons, which were, were kind of notorious after the war. Right. So they wouldn't have allowed him to Oh, no. They, make they, they would not right. have been happy knowing that he right. was documenting his conditions. Right. And, and like any... Uh, and it's interesting also in, in doing the reading for this that they were always referred to as prisoners and not prisoners mm. of war. Right. Very interesting. Mm. You know, okay. it, even in World War One and World War Two, we referred to the enemy and they referred to us as prisoners of war. Right. But they were just referred to as prisons. Oh, okay. They weren't prisoner of war mm. camps. They were just prisons. Right. So uh, wonderful documentation there. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Um, I think some folks, history buffs, might be familiar with where you said he ended up at Andersonville, mm -hmm. the infamous Andersonville prison. Um, and he has, I guess, a lot of documentation from that time when he was there. Yes, he, he did a fair amount of drawings there. But again, it's, it's the ones and I can't remember all because he, it was kind of, quite literally the journey he took right. from when he was captured to Andersonville. There were a, a half dozen stops at other mm -hmm. temporary right. uh, uh, prisons where he was able to do some drawings. Now, those aren't all exhibited with us, but mm -hmm. they're all sure. uh, preserved now. Right, so he really got around you know, oh, yes. even yes. before he was oh, captured. He, he, yeah, he, he did uh, drawings of his uh, first billet at, mm -hmm. uh, in New York. Then he was assigned in Northern Virginia, uh, which he did drawings uh, oh, okay. of and maps for. Then he was transferred to the Hampton Roads area, mm -hmm. where he became part of the Peninsula Campaign. Right. So then he was documenting all of, you know this area, and then as the Peninsula Campaign moved north along the mm -hmm. peninsula, he documented all of that. Right. And then he was captured. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, he was only 19 when he was doing right. this. Yeah, that's so, so he was young, captured in, in 1863. And then he began documenting mm -hmm. his, his journey back south again right. uh, through uh, Virginia and North Carolina and South mm -hmm. Carolina in the prisons. That is amazing. And I, I think it would be exciting for folks in the area to see images from that time because you normally don't see what the area looked like. Oh, no, absolutely. And. Uh, uh, there are some, you know, fixed photos, and we have these uh, like in our minds. Uh, you know, Civil War photos, of course, are black and white, right. and that's kind of what we we come to expect. And here are these wonderful, colorful landscapes exactly. right. and uh, architectural studies. You know, that's another thing that's that's his uh, training as an architect gave him an eye for the the architecture around him. Mm -hmm. So he's not only is he documenting uh, the headquarters. You mm -hmm. know that he was, you know, assigned to. Right. But he's also documenting this this wonderful architecture in the region mm -hmm. that there's no other surviving image for. Right. So would you say that that's particularly what characterizes his art and his drawings? That he had such a a training in the he architecture did. and knowledge. He, he about did. He did. He he had a unique skill set that almost right. no one else could have mm -hmm. accomplished what he did with his diary and mm -hmm. his his sketches. He was a cartographer mm -hmm. uh, by training, a landscaper. He was studying right. landscaping as well as architecture. So he, he knew how to draw the fauna mm -hmm. and the flora around right. him. Uh, he was studying architecture, so he understood perspective and could, mm -hmm. could paint uh, a building uh, correctly right. uh, with colors. You know? right. So we, now we have a, a color image of this building that probably doesn't even have a black and white photo. Right. And as a car cartographer, he's drawing uh, uh, you know, this aerial view of, mm -hmm. of, of battlefields mm -hmm. and campaigns. Wow. And, you know, the, the kind of stereotypical maps you see in history books, which have little blocks of red mm -hmm. and little blocks right. of blue. Right. He's drawing those by hand as they're wow. moving through the campaigns. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. That's, that's a lot of work. And, and it, I, the, the work is so meticulous. If you just uh, take away from the artistic accomplishment of the... Mm -hmm. uh, the drawings themselves mm -hmm. and, and the landscapes. Just a little cartouche in there where he, he's describing, he's giving the image a title and describing it and right. giving a date 
and the and his name and the unit he's assigned to. Wow. To do that freehand, you know, sitting in a desk in a tent in the battlefield is just <laughs> stunningly yeah. talented. That sounds great. So how long is the exhibit going to be at the museum? And we will have it open until I'm I am actually I believe it's the middle of April. Okay. So uh, a good long while. Oh yes, You'll it's, it's going to have a nice long venue for us. Uh, uh, while we're working on another permanent exhibit, we'll be opening in, okay. or not permanent, but one of our in-house developed exhibits will be opening in the space in the end of May of next year on, on okay. Hampton One Design Boating and Boat oh, Building okay. in Hampton. So. Well, that's important in the area, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the wonderful things about uh, uh, hosting these exhibits that someone else has done the curatorial work for mm -hmm. is I'm freed up to do the work right. for my next right. exhibit. So That's great. So. Thank you so much for coming on Round Robin. Is there anything Thank else you. you wanted to mention that the museum is doing right now or anything coming up? Uh, I would mention, uh, always very popular with us, is our Hampton uh, right. Horror Tours. That's right. Uh, the week Halloween's before Halloween, yeah. uh, between uh, the 22nd of uh, October and the 26th. Right. Uh, folks uh, locally are familiar with us. We mm -hmm. give two tours a night of, right. of uh, ghosts and ghouls uh, leading you through the history of Hampton over mm -hmm. Uh, one night's mm -hmm. wander. So and you'll have live actors portraying live actors, different uh, live actors, in uh, and we you know, our, our groups always sell out. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, please get your tickets early. All right. So I hope you'll take an opportunity to come out and see the uh, Robert Sneed exhibit, the Civil War uh, images and diaries. Uh, it opens October 6. Thank you again so much for coming on Round Robin. Thank and you for having me. Thank you for watching.